Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about how I like to teach the 2-3 zone defense to younger players or also to beginners. Now really quickly I should say that there are a lot of coaches who disagree with running a zone defense with younger players. I don't disagree. But, at the same time, they're going to learn it sometime in the future, so if your league allows it, why not teach them the zone defense? Now, going from there, personally, I like to explain my players in videos very similar to this. I like to send it to their parents and say, yo, show this to your kids. And then, I like to show them on a clipboard in front of them, like the iPad clipboard app that I use in this video. And then, I like to show them on the basketball court. So, how I like to explain it on the clipboard is basically how the zone works and what a zone is. And then, I like to go and have them set up in the zone. And let me just show you what I like to do anyways. But, basically have offensive players pass the ball around and explain to my players what they're supposed to be doing on the defensive end. Let's get down to the clipboard and I'll explain a little further. Okay, so this is a 2-3 zone. So, going from there, instead of guarding an individual man, you're guarding an area of the court. So, for example, player 1, he is going to be defending, essentially, that area on the court. We're then going to have player 3, who is going to be then defending this area of the court. We're then going to have player 2 defending this area of the court. Player 5 is going to be defending the bottom two-thirds or bottom half of the key. And then we're going to have player 4 who is going to be guarding this area of the court. Now, any of these overlapping areas that we see here are areas where we're going to have a double team. So, for example, if player 4 blue is in that double team section, we're going to have 4 red and 5 red defending him. We're then going to be having our players shift just like so. If we have the ball up top in the middle, we're going to be having a double team in the middle to try and force that player out towards the sidelines. And then meanwhile, if we have the ball in that section, we're going to be having both player 1 and 3 defending player 4 blue. So once I have explained this on the clipboard, I tell my players to get on the court. And I choose five players, and let's just say these are my five players that we have chosen on the basketball court. What I like to do here is have my players spread out. I usually have four or five other, four or five other players who are on the team and just have them spread out and basically have them pass the ball to each other. Where now if player four has the ball, we'll have player four red coming out. And then our defense would shift just like so. If we pass the ball around, we're then going to be moving our defense like this. And then we would, I would be explaining to my players, even on the clipboard beforehand, when the ball gets up top again, we're going to be double teaming. And again, if the ball gets passed over here, that's that double team area again, where we're going to be having our players shift just so, like so double team up top. If the ball gets passed down here, we're going to need to have player 3. He is going to be now defending player 5. Player 1 is going to be one pass away. Player 2 is going to be two passes away, just like how I like to explain in man-to-man -man defense. That's why I always like to teach my players man-to-man -man defense first in a shell-type drill like this, so that they understand what I mean by being one pass away and being two passes away. And then I would start mixing things up where I would then have a player in the low post. I would have them pass to the low post. We would then be double teaming once again. And now I would be explaining to my players what would happen if we had an overload. So if I had an overload and now this is this may take 30 minutes just to understand how to move as a zone defense. And I'm not going to lie to you, younger kids may take even longer to understand a zone defense.
And this is a huge reason why I like to teach the man-to-man -man first, just because sometimes it's just easier to have the man-to-man, -man because man-to-man -man defense is generally pretty simple to run, especially if you start uh, getting into uh, teaching your team what help defense is and things like that. It's going to help them understand the zone defense so much more, because when they get to the older age group, if a player leaves his zone to help out another player's zone, you can then flex in players, and if they're, if they're smart enough on the defensive end, they can flex over to another player's zone, so that now you're still in a 2-3 zone. Now I'm going to explain that a bit later in the, on this clipboard and in this video, because that is something that I teach my players a couple of years after they understand what a 2-3 zone really is, and how to actually run it properly. So by having player 5 being guarded in the low post, I like to still have player 1 being very close to player 3. Again, player 4 in help position. He could even come as low as wherever the backboard lines up. And we want to see player 2 start collapsing inside the key if not staying at the free throw line. Now, because player 5 is in a double team location, generally speaking, which would be between players 5 and 3, especially in practice, if it's the first time they're running this defense, or a couple of times into it, you're going to see a double team down here, and if you're playing against a team that has a good 3-point shooter, player 5 just needs to pass out, and that's going to be a quick shot that's been jacked up. So, how I like to teach my players is... I, I like to give them in-game options, things that happen in-game. And if there's, a high, if there's a high cut across, which then opens up the ability to have the overload defense, or a total overload, whoops, a total overload defense, then what I like to have taught is player 3, he doesn't drop down to double team player 5. Because that's going to leave player 1 open. So how I like to have it is player 3, you need to stay somewhat in the middle. I want you to be able to reach in, not to cause a foul, but if player 5 was to take a dribble, I want you to go after that ball. So I want you to be close enough to pick off a dribble, but also be far enough away so that if he does pass out to player 1, you can recover and still defend player 1. And this is how I like to explain this defense. And I, as I was saying, I would have my players on the court and I would be running through a dummy offense to be able to run against the 2-3 zone. I would also run our own offenses that I've already previously taught my team to then see if they're able to defend our own plays that they already know because they're going to be cheating because they know where that player is going to be cutting and everything like that. So if they know how to defend when players are cheating knowing what's going to happen next, then, or if we're able to play against a zone defense uh, with the defense already knowing what, to, what we're going to do, then our offense is going to be set and our, and our defense is going to be really good. But going into what I was talking about, being able to flex into other positions, let me get down to the clipboard and let me explain to you what I mean by that. Okay, so we have our 2-3 zone, and we have player 1 pass over to player 3, and let's say he does sort of like a triangle type cut, where he cuts, or he pops out over here. What I like to, how I like to run it later on, so the more advanced age groups, or the more, more advanced players, if player 1 was to get that ball, instead of player 3, so let's say he had the double team up top, instead of player 3 being left uh, wide or player one being left wide open uh, right away how I like to run it is to have player five come out and defend that three-point shot I like to have player four pop down and I like to see player two pop down and now we're still in our two three and player one is going to be then collapse or popping back over so that now we are still in our two three we don't have a player chasing to try and catch up to that pass because as we all know passes are a lot faster than dribbling or passes are a lot faster than running I should say so if that's in that in that case we have player 5 popping out player 4 popping over and now we are still in our 2-3 so if for example we have player 2 get that ball up top we now have player 1 and 3 
trapping up top and now we have our 2-3 looking just like this. So that's what I mean by flexing into other positions. So as you can see, flexing into other positions on the court is very beneficial to helping you still defend every player on the court. And we see this at the NBA level as well. If a player needs to leave his location to go and defend a really good three-point shooter, we then see players flexing in, flexing over, to be able to defend still the zone defenses that are there. The only thing is, is your players have to understand what's happening on the court have to understand you as a coach and what you want from them so if you want them to flex I would then teach them that in practice and then going from there they have to have the mindset of being able to look around on defense and say oh I've left my zone that means that I'm now taking this person's zone over and everyone else needs to move around to flex over to those other zones that are now open and if you do this seamlessly and quick, you have yourself a very solid zone defense. And if you want a really great zone defense for your own team that has helped a ton of coaches win a ton of different games and has even won championships in many different leagues throughout the United States as well as over in Europe and Canada, go check out my Unbeatable Basketball Zone Defense book in the link in the description below. It is absolutely fantastic and I'll see you guys in my next video later on today.